All right, so now we're going to get into biological molecules. Uh, and this is what a lot of the whole course is going to contain um, the study of biological molecules. So you would think when studying uh, cell biology or biology, it wouldn't be that much chemistry, but actually life is about chemical reactions uh, and cells are structured with these molecules. And kind of the introductory lecture gave you a little bit of the, the background to that. So these elements here, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen. They make up about 96% of all the biological molecules, not all biological mass, okay, really. Um, so these are the ones we're going to focus on uh, the most, and we're going to break down the biological molecules into really four major groups. We're going to start off with carbohydrates as the first group. Uh, then we're going to look at lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids. Uh, those are the four the four major categories, and they're all going to have certain things in common, and each one's going to have its own unique traits. Some of the things that you're going to need to learn or take away from these are going to be uh, what elements make them up, how are they organized in their most simple unit, and then how are the simple units added together to make more complex units. All right, so we're going to have things that are smaller parts and pieces, uh, and then we're going to build larger complex molecules out of those. So starting off with carbohydrates. Okay, so now the word right, alone, carbohydrate. I'm going to break it down a little bit. Carbo and then hydrate. Well, how about hydrate? You think of, what do you think of when you hear that word? Water, right? So like H2O, carbohydrate. Uh, and then carbo, I mean carbon, right? And what we're going to find is that this right here, one carbon, two hydrogens, one oxygen, that is what we're going to call our formula for a carbohydrate. And I'm going to put this outside here in N. So if you're not familiar with that notation, that just that's some number. That could be any number. So for example, um, we could have um, CH2O, and the number outside could be uh, five, like this. What does that mean? It means inside here, the relationship is C5, H2 times 5, so that's 10, and then O is also 5. The thing to keep in mind here is there's always the same number of carbons and oxygens and double the number of hydrogens. That's part of the definition of a carbohydrate. So to be a carbohydrate, it's not hydrated carbon. Uh, that's kind of where the name comes from, but that, that's not the case. We're going to draw the structure. You're going to see that that is not the structure at all, but that is how it can help you remember the formula. So if anything that helps you remember it um, uh, will be of your ben of benefit to you. So uh, that's the way it works. So that, that's a basic formula for a carbohydrate. So uh, I may ask you, um, you know, how many oxygens are in a formula that has a CH2O with a 6 outside, and it's 6. How many hydrogens? It would be double, so that would, that would be 12. Okay, so let's draw a, a carbohydrate. All right, so we're going to start off with, with a carbon, and we'll draw um, we'll draw something even, well, we'll draw this 5 carbon one here, right? I guess just to get right into it. So, um, carbons, 1, and we're going to link them together, okay, 2, 3, four and five okay like this so we got five carbons those are check now we said uh, a carbohydrate is going to have an equal number of oxygens so one question would be you know, well, where do we put them that, that is going to be something that determines the specific carbohydrate you have so one sugar say versus a different sugar the oxygens may be oriented different from one another but there are also rules that we could follow that are fairly standard and, and fairly simple every carbon has an oxygen attached to it every carbon has one oxygen now i'm drawing these oxygens down here down below the carbons some of them could be down, some of them could be up. They could be, this one could be up here, and this one could be down, and they could be switched. Though That is what makes one five-carbon sugar different from another five-carbon sugar. So we can have many sugars that all have five carbons. They'll all have ten hydrogens, and they'll all have five oxygens. But they're different sugars. We have them different names, and they behave differently. Your body and your cells metabolize them in different ways. How does it know? 
if they are technically by its formula the same well the structure this this sort of thing will be different but we're going at it from a really straightforward simplistic point of view so now we have the hydrogens and the other thing we want to keep in mind how many bonds can certain elements hold right carbons typically have four bonds so this one already has three so there's a fourth a fourth a fourth a fourth a fourth like that okay so that's the four bonds for all the carbons now hydrogens will only have one bond so if we start and, and oxygens will have if you remember two 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 bonds uh, so what we're going to do is now fill in the 10 hydrogens around here if we were just to so this is an if and some of this is going to actually stay and some of this is going to go if we were just to fill in the whole thing the remainder with hydrogens see how many we would we would need we need okay one two three four five six seven eight nine ten two more eleven twelve so we'd actually would need twelve if we were going to fill it in like that so obviously there's something else there's there's something uh, an additional rule that we need and that additional rule is that somewhere within the structure there needs to be a carbon oxygen double bond okay this is called a carbonyl group and it's a it's a type of functional group and we're going to go through functional groups as opposed to just alone we're going to introduce them uh, as they come up so what we're going to find is that uh, one of these carbon oxygen double bonds or, sorry, one of these carbon oxygen bonds is a call a double bond. Right. So now that's the two bonds for the oxygen. But now this this carbon has one, two, three, four, five. So we gotta have to also have to get rid of one of these as a potential. And if we look at it now and count, okay, if we were to fill in with hydrogens, we would need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10 hydrogen so we can actually just fill it in take the hydrogens one two seven eight nine ten okay and that would be a very simple drawing of a five carbon sugar right? which would be a simple carbohydrate so it's carbon with hydrogens and oxygens okay just those three elements there is the same number by definition carbons and oxygens and double the number of hydrogens and this is the way it would be laid out now we can have some variation to this one of those variations could be the location of that double bond i said some of the oxygens could be flip-flopped from side to side and the double bond that could be located uh, in different places so what we could do is do something like this um, change this a little bit we could put the double bond inside in an inner carbon like this so now that carbon has one two three four bonds the oxygen has one two bonds uh, this carbon now needs the other hydrogen and this oxygen will take that hydrogen like this so we count that's two three four five six seven eight nine ten hydrogens we still have the same number of carbons uh, and oxygens but just the double bond has been moved now to the the interior and we have different names for the sugars so a sugar who has the carbon oxygen double bond um, in the okay so um, the sugars who have the carbon oxygen double bond at different locations uh, will often get also different names okay so we'll have a, a ketose sugar has the carbon oxygen double bond you know somewhere to the interior so that's the carbon oxygen double bond location is going to be somewhere in the interior of the sugar and aldose sugar is one uh, which was the first one i drew uh, which was is on an end so the carbon oxygen double bond is at an end uh, of the sugar so it could be on you know this end or the other end uh, and that would be an aldose sugar we're not going to really go into them into that much detail but you will hear um, names of some of the specific molecules we talk about and sometimes these uh, terms will come up 
And as you, if you understand a little bit more of the terminology, you'll understand a little bit more of the meaning um, and how to actually do the drawings. Okay. So that, that's the first part. So that's just a simple sugar. I'll do another one. Uh, and then what we're going to do is see how we can put sugars together right, in it, doing a, a specific type of chemical reaction. So we said no matter what um, number of carbons we have, we're going to follow this basic pattern. Okay, So where we have carbons, uh, every carbon has an oxygen. Every um, oxygen will typically have a hydrogen except one. Uh, and that one will be forming a double bond with a carbon. And that double bond could either be at the end or that double bond could be somewhere in the middle. Uh, and, and this is how we come up with the names. So look at another one. Let's just look at something uh, very simple, um, like C3, H6, O3. Uh, and, and, and so we would have, again, three carbons, one, two, three, like this. Each carbon has an oxygen attached to it. Um, one of those oxygens has to be a double bond. We can just do something like this. Count the total number of bonds. Carbons have four bonds. So there's, that one's already done. Right? So these guys need four bonds. Each oxygen needs two bonds because right? it needs two, two electrons to fill its outer shell. We have six hydrogens. One, two, three, four, five, six. Right? This, this oxygen could be drawn up like I did. We could draw that oxygen down right, and, and change the, the name of the sugar. So it could be a different sugar drawn in a different position. And that would be it. So drawing a simple sugar. Now, I, we called this, we gave this group a name, right? We called it a carbonyl group. There's another, this oxygen hydrogen, you know, as well. That's also going to be one of our functional groups, and it's called a hydroxyl group. So a hydroxyl group is another type of functional group, and a hydroxyl group is an OH, and we typically draw it like this. Now, what you may say is, wait a second, um, I remember watching a pH um, video, and you had something that was OH and a little, little negative like that, and we call that a hydroxide ion. So this is going to be a really important point. Um, this is the hydroxide ion. And this is the hydroxyl functional group. Now, what's the difference? So this is an ion. It just exists on its own. It's not attached to anything, and it carries a permanent negative charge. So that's an actual charge there. Technically, this is, although this is the way we draw it, the negative charge is with the oxygen. The oxygen is negatively charged. The hydrogen uh, is not. Here, it looks like the negative is with the oxygen, but this is representing uh, actually a covalent bond. So that little line there is actually representing a bond. So that's this right here. So this hydroxyl group actually is an oxygen with a hydro with a bond, a covalent bond to a hydrogen here, and then another covalent bond, just a single bond to a carbon. Right? And this unit here we refer to as the hydroxyl functional group. Um, so carbohydrates or sugars to technically have a lot of these hydroxyl groups. Every oxygen hydrogen part is a hydroxyl group. It's important because these hydroxyl groups are going to have unequal sharing of electrons, which means, right, that the hydrogens of them are going to be sort of positive and the oxygens of them are going to be sort of negative. So there actually is some charge going on there, but it's about polar charge because we have polar covalent, polar covalent bonds within it, which means that all these groups are going to have some ability to then interact with water, which makes it soluble. Does sugar dissolve in water? It does, right? That's because water molecules, right? The water molecules have that partial negative charge on the oxygens, the partial positives on the hydrogens. Now here is this little functional group. It's going to have the same kind of breakdown. And then there's going to be some attraction, right? The water molecule is going to attract the oxygen part. will attract that hydrogen. That's going to be what we call a hydrogen bond. And so when sugars dissolve in water, what's really happening is the water molecules are actually interacting with the sugar molecules. There's an attraction between the two. They're forming these types of bonds with one another. 
Uh, and so they kind of just mix together. The individual molecules are all mixed. Uh, and that's an important characteristic that sugars are what we call polar molecules, that they're water soluble molecules. Uh, as we start to look at cell membranes and we start to then look at the next type of uh, biological molecule, the lipids, uh, we're going to find the lipids are going to be carbons and hydrogens and almost no oxygens. And so there's not going to be any polar bonds, which means there's not going to be interactions with water. So uh, this is, is going to be important. It's going to relate to other concepts and topics that, that come up later on. So first part of this is carbohydrates, basic formula, uh, be able to sketch a, a super simple structure, just given a number. Um, you can put these, we're not, you're not going to be asked to draw glycogen versus glucose versus uh, sucrose, just very generic uh, in this course. In a biochemistry course, it would be going into a lot more detail. But for here, you know, the carboxyl functional group um, and the carbonyl function. Sorry, oh, we didn't get to carboxyl yet. We have a carbonyl functional group, um, which is the carbon oxygen double bond. We have a hydroxyl group, right, which is the oxygen hydrogen. Uh, and then we're going to get into this other one uh, a little bit later. So what we're going to do next is uh, I'm going to look at complex carbohydrates is just the next step beyond this. And then and that's pretty much going to be it for carbohydrates. So we're just going to look at one more step where we look at how do we take this is one sugar. How do we join it to a second sugar and to a third and a fourth and start to build long chains of sugars? And once we do that, um, then, then we'll be done with carbohydrates. And that's going to be um, an important concept because it's going to also be similar to how all the other molecules are linked together. So we're talking about amino acids linking. Some of the aspects of this next topic will be very similar. Uh, so kind of keep that in mind as we go through.